concept of freedom was a very simple one. That to move from the physical restraints to a place where you had relative ability to move about. After the period of slavery, the concept of freedom became slightly different. It became one of now that the chains are off, now that the fences are removed, now that the dogs are no longer put on us, now that you no longer have a right to deprive me of the ability to move, then it became clear that even though those things were gone, freedom still was not there. So it became a little less tangible. Even though you couldn't vote and even though you couldn't walk on the same side of the street and even though you had to drink out of a special fountain and even though your children had to go to special schools and you had to live in special areas, the idea though is that somehow it was still less tangible, it was less clear, it was more abstract, but people knew something still was wrong so they said freedom means let me participate. So they said, boss, oh, now that the chains are gone, let me do some of what you do. Let me go where you go, eat where you go, go to the bathroom where you go to the bathroom. Let me live where you live and let my children go where yours go. And our concept of freedom then became one of participation. And so for almost a half of a century, we worked hard to participate. We wanted to simply do what boss did. And if we were doing what boss was doing, we thought we were free. And we made lots of efforts to try to do what boss did. We prayed, we marched, we sat in, we walked in, we voted, we unvoted, we got beaten down in the streets. We did everything just trying to let boss let us participate. Because the concept of freedom then was just to be able to do what boss was doing. Then the law got shifted again and they began to let us do that. We could vote and we could drink out the same fountain, eat at the same place, sleep in the same place. We really thought that now the freedom was here. Then we kept finding out something still ain't right. It still ain't right. So I tell you what, boss. Let us be like you. We want to marry you and... <laughs> Listen. We want to go to your school. We don't want no these colored schools. We want to go to your school, boss. We don't want to have no black community. We want to live integrated. No longer no participation. We want to integrate. We want to live right next to you. We want to pray next to you. We want to sing next to you. We want to do everything right with you. Don't give us none of this old black stuff. None of this old African stuff. I'm an American, boss. I'm a real American. And, and once we began to push for that, we didn't want nothing to keep us from being a good American. That's right. We wanted to fight where boss fought. We wanted to go to his war, right. live in his place. So the thrust then had gone from plantation to participation to membership. We wanted to be shared with him, and we thought we'd be free. But then we found out that we got there and we were sitting there and somehow we still didn't feel free. Sitting in his school, still didn't feel free. Reading his book, still didn't feel free. On his television, still didn't feel free. In his play, still didn't feel free. Everything we did still didn't give us the sense of being free because we knew that something was still missing. Ethnocized psychotherapy may include non-medical or non-psychiatric approaches to the correction of behavioral misconduct by using various therapeutic labeling treatment or behavioral modification procedures to return the deviant to normalcy, i.e. to the norms of one group. 
those with established power and a vested interest in resisting social change, norms that are declared to be the norms of, of society as a whole. In this instance, what is considered normal is also considered necessarily good or moral. In contrast, the abnormal or deviant, deviant is considered bad or immoral. In this, in this guise, ethnicized psychotherapy may be rightly perceived as an ally of medicalized psychotherapy in that they both provide practical benefits to the ruling establishment by advancing its established moral and political positions against those of the oppressed disguised as humane, enlightened, disinterested, and apolitical therapeutics. Thus, what at first sight may appear to be the utilization of objective scientific approach in dealing with deviancy in reality involved involves the stigmati stigmatization, moral condemnation, and politi politicization of the behavioral and consciousness of people, of persons struggling against social injustice and inequality. Roland Leifer defined the ethnicization of psychotherapy as the molding and the polarization of behavior so that it, confirm, it conforms to prevailing cultural patterns. It is indoctrination or training for culturally specific traits, attitudes, and actions. The aim of ethnicized psychotherapy is to return the deviant to normal, i.e. to instill the deviant a set of particular traits, attitudes, values, behavior, orientations, and goals, which, when pursued or realized, support and maintain the political, economic, social status quo along with its ruling elite. Ethnicized psychotherapy like its medicated counterpart, also strips the deviant act of its social and political meaning by pretending it is mechanicalistically or in some order determined, thereby denying that the act could possibly be justified from the standpoint of an alternative view in social morality. Ethnocide psychotherapy, too, views any form of behavior and state of consciousness which do not conform to the norms of political economic interest of the ruling establishment or groups as by definition a reflection of individual maladjustment, emotional immaturity, mental pathology, or some other negatively valued concept. Thus, problems which may be reflective of social and political problems are, dism are dismissed as the ailments of isolated individuals as evident of individual maladjustment or epi epipneumonia of a distorted personality, all abstracted from the field of social and economic forces which generate the existence and form. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Happy Monday. Welcome back to On the Shoulders of Giants. I am Joseph Ward. And when we are continuing and actually finishing our reading of Dr. Amos Wilson's book, The Falsification of African Consciousness, Eurocentric History, Psychiatry, and the Politics of White Supremacy. And I'm reading on page, starting on page 108, the bottom paragraph of 108, Ethnocized Psychotherapy. The reconstructing or the... Uh, or basically getting people in line. We're just gonna leave it at that. A way to get the Negro in line, especially the Negro who has the abnormal behavior, the deviant behavior, the, be the behavior that is not the ideal behavior of the group that's in power because this behavior of this individual is, uh, it's a behavior that would challenge the status quo. It's a behavior that actually challenges the status quo. It's a behavior that could wake up the others, right? So think about what they did with the Black Panthers, right? How they systematically eliminated the Black Panthers or any other freedom fighters, right? We talked about this before, right? So looking at examples of like Nat Turner, look at how they brutally uh, punished him after being caught from reading, uh, from leading his insurrections. So those who pose a great threat to the system, to the status quo, will be punished and punished mightily and handedly, but they, they will be demonized before they're punished, right? 
But the demonization and the punishment is also reinforcement to keep others in line. And we talked about this on our Friday breakdown when we talked about the bloodlust of the white supremacists, right? So, but in this, he's talking about the, the non-medicated or the non-psychiatric approaches to the correction of behavioral misconduct by using various ther therapeutic labeling treatment and behavior modification procedures to return the deviant to normalcy so going outside of the of the of the normal box that we would consider that a, a therapist would use to change a person's behavior patterns right so we're going to get further into what these what these tools are what these what these techniques are to be able to reshape the the ideologies the ideas the mindsets of those who will be considered deviant right but on our end it's to understand what's happened so we can protect what we build internally and externally protecting what we build doesn't just mean protecting that a nation if we build it but it's the the rebuilding of the African centered mind, right? The black American mind, right? Whatever you want to call it, however you want to say it. It's a it's a overthrowing of the Eurocentric mindset that we were given and replacing it with that liberated mindset, with that black mindset, with that African mindset, with that freedom mindset. A mindset of a of a of a powerful people, of a strong people, of a capable people, of a confident people right us understanding that we are not dependent upon white supremacy that white supremacy actually needs us it needs us to be subservient it needs us to want to be a part of what boss got going on like dr Am uh naeem akbar was talking about and i i chose that clip because i like what he was saying as far as us looking for liberation but looking for liberation in the wrong places using the wrong manner because it goes with what we're reading right and also in the later latter part of the clip when he's talking about well we've done all these other things to be free in a total sense but we we haven't gained that freedom in a total sense so let's become the white people let's marry the white people let's integrate or matter of fact Let's assimilate fully into white culture and become as much of the white as we can. So this renders us powerless to actually gain the freedom that we need because in order for us to integrate or assimilate fully into white culture, we have to take on the mindsets and the behaviors and the characteristics and the normalcy of the status quo of the white culture of the white world that we're looking to assimilate in we have to become that rendering us less of a threat to revolt less of a threat to freedom less of a chance to have true liberation so that's what we're getting into um remember to like this video comment subscribe share tell everybody about this channel i appreciate all the support i, I appreciate all the love me kim i appreciate you for your continued support thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you from the bottom of my heart thank you me kim for your continued support and let's get as many likes views and everything on this video let's run this stuff up so let's jump back in to the bottom of page 110 we're talking about educative psychotherapy remember the, we're talking about the different techniques that are used to reshape the mindset of those who would go against the status quo so <clears throat> in 1969 leifer makes an important distinction between ethnicized psychotherapy and educative psychotherapy he points out that both therapeutic approaches turn to the fulcrum of social power he contends that ethnic that ethnicization involves the use of social power to influence thought and conduct in socially approved directions education involves the analysis of social power among other subjects to understand its influence on the lives of individuals and social groups <clears throat> read that again ethnicization involves the use of social power to influence thought 
and conduct in socially approved directions. Education involves the analysis of social power, among other subjects, to understand its influence on the lives of individuals and social groups. Given the political economic position of Africans in the world today and the negative social and mental health outcomes devolving therefrom, the African-centered education, educational and therapeutic psychology emphasizes critical analysis and understanding of how the ethnicizing Eurocentric social agent, whether therapeutic, educator, etc., attempts to mold African behavior to fit specifically, to fit specific Eurocentrically self-serving legal, moral, political, and ethnic standards. An African-centered educative approach, in addition to defining and dis designating certain states of consciousness and forms of behavior relative to the needs of African peoples, must engage the client in a full analysis of his life goals and methods for achieving them while helping to imbue his efforts with social meaning, purpose, and creative power. It seeks to imbue in its participants an African-centered consciousness and behavior orientation, which will maximize the positive expression of its fundamental humanity and its ability to maximize, contribute to, to maximally contribute to the growth and development of the African community to which he is a member. Right. So recognizing the educative approach, recognizing the approach that the Europeans have took to shape our minds, encountering that with the African centered education with the African-centered approach, with the African-centered uh, behaviors, right? So having a great understanding of the how, not just saying, well, white people have done this to us or white people have done that to us. Well, how did white people actually do it? And what were the implications of it? Like, what was the mindset behind it? What was the desire outcome? And was that desire outcome met? Right. And so analyzing it and like, like becoming technical Ted and totally breaking it down. Like this is the time to be totally analytical and totally break it down. Right. Like what actually happened? So we're talking about altering states of consciousness from one way that we're normally existing from a from a eurocentric molded mind a mind that will lead us to be more violent uh less loving less caring less nurturing less educational we, we're not producing we're not growing we're only hoping we're at a subservient state to where we're only hoping that white people choose to behave different instead of learning how to make things different. The participant in African Senate therapeutic and educational and, and educational encounters discovers how he has been unconsciously conditioned by a Eurocentric system to respond habitually and unthinkingly to its social cues to Eurocentric authorities and social contexts, which induce him to perceive, think, feel, and behave in certain ways. How has he been cued to avoid perceiving, thinking, and feeling, and behaving in certain ways? Leifer in 1969 also says how his Eurocentric consciousness, the source of his domination, is but a state of unconsciousness representing itself as consciousness. Eurocentric consciousness, the mortal enemy of African-centered consciousness, which it displaces and represses, imposes on its African host the dream states of sleepwalkers and subambulistic wanderers in the in the dark of the night. A major educative, therapeutic, and politically liberating milestone is reached in African centered therapy and education when the participants, be they labeled normal or abnormal, conformist or deviants become poignantly aware of how the various institutions and practices which define Eurocentric culture and utilize our culture are utilized to control African people's minds and behavior, prevent Africans from developing the social skills and knowledge necessary for them to be masters of their own destiny, foster the kinds of behavioral ineptitudes and deviations often labeled as deficient antisocial or mental illness maintain african unawareness of the social games and rules by which the culture transforms and dominates african consciousness and behavior condition africans to avoid thinking 
and behaving in ways which expand their self-consciousness and behavioral repertoire, impair Africans' ability to master their own conduct, increase their self-reliance and self-sufficiency, impair their ability to acquire the intellectual and social skills, the critical intelligence to solve the problems of their lives, the material and the material and capacity to determine their own future and in future intelligently. So we are when we're talking about arrested development, like he just really laid out what arrested development really is, like our inability to literally grow as a human being. Our growth is literally stunted as human beings when we are existing as African people, as oppressed African people, dominated people within the Eurocentric system, having a Eurocentric mindset, um, exhibiting Eurocentric behavioral patterns. It stunts our growth as African people. It stunts our full growth into how we're supposed to truly see ourselves. Like the, the, the place that African people have held in the world historically. We don't see that. We don't understand that. We can't embrace that because of the Eurocentric mindsets that we that we have. So it is my self-esteem is built when white people are proud of me. My self-worth is built when white people are proud of me. My self-image is intact when white people, when I like what white people see. Because the the white opinion, the white perspective, the Eurocentric ideology of life is what is. It's the standard. And it will always be the standard in the mind of the Eurocentric, or the, the person that we would call the Negro pen. The Negro with the Eurocentric mindset. So all of us have been given this Eurocentric mindset. That's why we exist the way we exist. We don't progress for a reason. Remember, I remember what Dr. Akbar said. I want to be like you, boss. I want to be you, boss. So if I want to be you, I would never fully grow into me. I would never fully realize who I am as an individual if I want to be you. My black self-love would never really flourish like it's supposed to. My black purpose will never flourish like it's supposed to because all of the love and the purpose that I have will go to making your system better, making the white system better because we have no system of our own. But that's the reason for us to replace the Eurocentric mindset with the african centered mindset or the black mindset. So we can have our own and empower our own and start using our power and our creative and our collective abilities to, to make ours better rather than con constantly contributing to someone else's. African people can best successfully counter the hegemonic interest of Eurocentric society by reclaiming their African centered consciousness, identity, and social interest by founding their consciousness and behavior on an accurate perception of and respect for reality and a passionate love of truth on a knowledge and acceptance of their African heritage, a dedicated passion to achieve and maintain consciousness, thoughtful, voluntary self-control, their ability to first love themselves, to maintain affectionate relations and positive regard among themselves, the achievement of a collective cooperative unifying consciousness and behavior orientation and on the ability to engage in productive pro-social proactive rather than counterproductive self-defeating reactionary activities however these objectives would not be attained until african empowerment neutralizes or reverses the power relations and differentials which are the social foundations of white supremacy right I mean, that's what I just said. <laughs> Being able to see ourselves in a different light. But that would take a changing of the paradigm, the shifting of the paradigm, a shifting of the information that we take in and how we take in that information and even how we 
digest, process, and utilize the information. We're talking about true empowerment. We're not talking about the idea of empowerment. We're talking about true empowerment. How to actually be free behind enemy lines. But the greatest enemy line that we're behind is the line that's in our mind. <clears throat> the ability of dominant whites to socially manufacture or markedly influence African states of consciousness and conduct in the interest of perpetuating white supremacy is both the source and product of the power relations and inequalities which inhere, which inhere between the races. The white social the white social manufacture of black consciousness and behavior will end when the power differentials which makes this process possible are equalized or reversed by increased power empowerment the necessary this necessary equation or reversal of power relations begins when africans come to understand the nature of power its social origins and applications when they recognize that they are as capable of its acquisitions and disposition as are their europeans as their European counterparts, and when they con when they consciously and deliberately choose to acquire and dispose of it in their own interest and in the defense of their own liberty, the African understanding and application of power must begin with a pragmatic concept of power, such as outlined by Folk Hope. Hey Amen. Power is waiting on us to grab it. Power not just going to come to us; it is waiting on us to grab it. But let's look at this outline of power, right? Power is conceived not as property, but as a strategy that is effects that its effects of domination are attributed not to appropriation, but to dispositions, maneuvers, tactics, techniques, functionings. The but one should decipher in it a network of relations constantly in tension in activity rather than a privilege that one might possess that one should take as as it as its model a perpetual battle rather than a contact regulating a transaction or a conquest of territory in short this power is exercised rather than possessed it is not the privilege acquired or pres preserved of the dominant class but the overall effects of its strategic possessions of its strategic positions as effect that it's manif that is manifested and sometimes Extend, extended by the position of those who are dominated. Power is seized. Power is exercised. Power is recognized. Power isn't just given up. Power isn't just spread out and divided and, and everybody get a chance to touch the power. No. There's a powerful and a power less. Which one are we going to continue to be? Say what you want to say and feel how you want to feel, but look at how the world actually works. How is power actually seized? But how do you put yourself in a position to seize power? The strategies and tactics by which dominant whites attempt to order, reorder, and disorder African consciousness and behavior must be neutralized by African centered strategic and tactical counterattacks. The metaphysical preparation to undertake such counter moves first must include the thorough decolonizing of African consciousness and the strategic organization of the African community, making it capable of creating a collective intelligence and, ad and adaptational talent, which in turn will, will enable it to overthrow white supremacy and achieve its liberation from oppression. The very brief outline which follows suggests some some broad means by which these goals can be reached. And from here on out, I'll be reading different things that Dr. Wilson suggests that we could do to reach the liberation that we truly want. But let's not just go back. Let's not just gloss over what was said. We're talking about strategies, tactics that are used to gain power, maintain power. And make sure that power is still there in the future. We're not talking about video games. We're not talking about uh, play play stuff. We're talking about real life. We're 
we talked to, we 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 already heard the audio of Malcolm on our Tuesdays, you know, when we released the, the lectures talking about how bloody the uh the revolutions are. But there's also a lot of strategy that goes into it because the 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 physical confrontation is the last step, but it's also a mighty step and a strategic step to keep people in line and in place. But you have to be able to defend yourself on all fronts. So these are he's he's saying these are things that we can do to defend ourselves on all fronts. So the reintegration of African history. The true history and culture of African people must be rediscovered, reexamined, and reintegrated by African people. These approaches to African history and culture must conjointly become the vehicles which facilitate the collective and cooperative action of African people in the pursuit of their liberation. The appropriate, the appropriate reclamation of African history and culture will provide Africans with a realistic and supportive vision of reality with self-knowledge, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-acceptance, and self-control, with the ability to form empowering, affectionate relationships, and the ability to engage in, pro in proactive, self-interested, pro productive activity with a self-enhancing sense of purpose and existential meaningfulness. Upgrading coping resources. The economic organization of the African community, much more so than its alleged economic impoverishment, and dependency in tandem with the rep with the repression of its african centered consciousness and identity are principally responsible for its vulnerability to the stresses placed on it by the dominant white supremacist establishment but its economic institutions and resources are primarily owned and controlled and exploited by aliens the african-american community has not been able to finance and constrict and construct the necessary social institutions to educate train and generally socialize its constituents to provide them with the personal and social competencies which together could successfully mediate resist and finally overcome the hegemonic institutions of white supremacy in the spirit of black nationalism the african community must occupy and control its internal markets and resources and you and utilize the resulting proceeds to remediate and finance its entry into national and international markets this must be accomplished simultaneously with the rapid and effective African-centered education and socialization of all of its constituents, young and old. The combination of relative economic independence, power, and prestige, African-centered cultural organization and identity, high levels of personal and social competence will provide quality coping resources, which will not only optimize African mental and social health, but will also facilitate African liberation neutralizing self i mean neutralizing social stressors institutional racism generates stressors such as inadequate family incomes health care education job training housing employment economic development and restricted stereotypically based biased information and entertainment services which strain the black community's coping mechanisms the effects of these stressors are amplified by the relatively dependent and reactive orientation of the African community. The virtual absence of a robust independent movement in the community leave it, leaves it vulnerable to being exploited and victimized by predatory aliens, further increasing the vulnerability to stress of all types. Reversing reactionary states of the African body politics. The African body politic must immerse itself in the center of an African centered political, economic, historical, cultural force, force field, if it is to repel the sensational hold on it by white supremacy. It can be accomplished by investing the African body politic, which is with its natural African centered knowledge, consciousness, and identity. The African body politic must be re rescued from its Eurocentric prisons, uh, denuded denuded of his Eurocentric markings, sensibilities, taste, and appetites, restored to mental and physical health, and trained to do and produce for self. The energy of the African body politic must be re redirected from its exhaustive expenditure in the construction and maintenance of reactionary psychosocial defenses and damage control devices to the construction and maintenance of an African-centered problem-solving consciousness and identity 
and in in indomitable sense of mission the enormous energy to which the african body politic is host must be directed toward growth and creation of opportunities for its positive expression towards the development of problem solving and self-actualizing mental behavioral competencies for successfully meditating and um, med excuse me, mediating and overcoming the stresses of white supremacy. Controlling of effective coping strategies and tactics. Africans must choose coping strategies and tactics which reverse tendencies to be motivated by Eurocentrically induced lacks, deprivations, needs, anxieties, and appetites. The obsessive pursuit pursuit and compulsive consumption of psychological, social, and physical anesthetics, pain relievers, stimulants, and euphorians, as well as the use of addictive social practices and coping strategies against oppression-related stress, must be rejected and replaced by positive African-centered practices, pursuits, and pleasures. This can be this can be best achieved by the development of community power, which produces knowledge and fields of knowledge, which simultaneously constitute fields of power relations, power knowledge re relations, which will enable the African community to empower and liberate itself. It must become a community which deeply studies and teaches to its young power knowledge, re not to, to its young power knowledge relations, imaginative, creative, strategic, and tactical organization as the keys to power and self-defense. Then he goes on to say, to be free, the African community must continue and strengthen its tradition of truth seeking. For the liberation of the community depends on its ability to discern the real sources and causes of its trials and tribulations from both within and outside itself. Its ability to solve its problems based on sound knowledge, on objective appraisals of its situation and of its intuitive and well-adaptive and well-developed ability to undertake conscious and rational constructive courses of action. So then there's now the African control of labeling and treatment processes. So, Paulo, Paulo Fieri has noted that indeed the interest of the oppressors lie in changing the consciousness of the oppressed, not the situation which oppresses them. For the more, for the more the oppressed can be led to adapt to that situation, the more easily they can be dominated. Oppressors produce a consciousness in the oppressed, not only by manipulating their ecological and sociological lifestyles and possibilities, but also by naming the world in which both they and the oppressed exist. To name, to label, is to bring into consciousness and therefore to transform the consciousness and empowering themselves to name the world and to reinforce their naming of it. Oppressors empower themselves to construct the social reality of the consciousness of the oppressed in ways compatible with their interest. The social reality of consciousness of the oppressed as forged by their oppressors motivate them to functionally perpetuate their own oppression. The labeling of certain aspects of reality by oppressors represents the imposition of the oppressor's choice and worldview upon the oppressed. If this choice and worldview are internalized by the oppressed, then their consciousness may be transformed into the one that conforms their oppressor's consciousness. Through its demarcation of reality, the white supremacist regime seeks to transform African people's consciousness and behavior, as well as their self-perception of their own behavior in ways comparable with Eurocentric interest. The Eurocentric demarcation of reality is not only designed to transform African behavior and self-perception, but to manage the perception that others have of Africans as well. Couldn't have said it better myself. Everything that I've read just thus far lately, all of the steps that I, that I have taken is to transform the consciousness and maintain the transformation. Maintaining transformation to maintain dominance, to neutralize your opponent. So for us in this understanding and gaining this further understanding, how long will we be neutralized? How long will we allow them to neutralize us? How long will we agree to stay on the bottom? How long will we choose to assimilate, right? Because at this point, we are agreeing to be participants in the system of white supremacy. At this point, we are agreeing to help maintain the status quo and to hold up the system of white supremacy. 
at this point, right? So it is now time to change that. It is now time to reorient ourselves in an African, in an African centered mind state to have an African centered lifestyle, to have an African centered society, to have an African centered nation. A nation that is powerful, a nation that is intelligent, a, a nation that is technologically advanced, a nation that is economically sound and strong, a nation that is well respected, a nation whose sovereignty will not be tested, a nation of people who rose from the ashes, a nation of people who realized their strength and realized their work and realized that their blackness was not a curse. A nation of people who realized that their blackness did not relegate them to the bottom. A nation of people who loves their blackness. A nation of people who understands their intelligence and understands their physical abilities. A nation of people who aggregates all of their abilities and works together, who loves to work together, who looks forward to working together because we understand that there's power in numbers, there's strength in numbers. And the more of us that gets together, and become the greatest versions of ourselves within an African centered mind. We will transform the world, transform our world, and transform the future for our youth. So the last part is, if this situation is to be transformed to enable subordinate Africans to achieve liberation from white domination, then the license to name the world, to categorize, classify, or otherwise demarcate the world and behavior on the part of whites must be revoked. Africans must assert their right and power of self-definition, of categorizing and classifying the world and nature of the name being in it, of prescribing treatments for their behavior and establishing the conditions of their lives in ways which make their minds and bodies humanitarian instruments of African power and liberation, as well as instruments for the empowerment and liberation from oppression and all humankind. And he has a great point. The naming of things. <clears throat> the naming of things that denotes domination, that denotes that we're in charge, that we're in power. So we have literally shaped the world the way we wanted to. We've shaped the world in our image, in our likeness, in our mindsets, in our ideas. By naming, by coming into your space, taking your space, and renaming everything the way we want it to be. This is now our world. So this is how 10% of the world could dominate the 90% of the melanated world. They wanted it more. So we have to want freedom more than anything else. The falsification of African consciousness, Eurocentric history, psychiatry, and the politics of white supremacy. Dr. Amos Wilson, link is in the description to get your copy. If you haven't gotten your copy by now, you tripping. If this is your first time tuning in, first time seeing this video, thank you. Welcome. Salute. In the description, you can get your copy and you can support me. You can support Dr. Amos Wilson. All that is in the description. Make sure you like this video, comment, subscribe. And remember, it's going to be up to y'all to determine what we read next. So let me know. You know, I'm gonna put my choices up and you let me know what we read next. So I got some, I got some bangers coming. So let's get ready. I love you all. Let me make sure y'all catch the next video coming up.